All right, ready? Okay. Okay. Are you yawning? A little bit. I'm tired. It's been a long okay. day. Okay, let's just both yawn together and then we can start. Ready? I don't want to yawn with you. <laughs> Welcome everyone to our awesome announcements. I'm Mr. Matt. And I'm Miss Jenna. We're so excited to see you today. There's lots going on this season and we wanted to make sure you know all about it. Like, did you guys know that Christmas Fest is in three weeks? Woo! It is only $3 a person and it's happening on December 7th. We are gonna have so much fun at Christmas Fest. There's gonna be caroling, Christmas crafts, cookies to decorate, cards to make, and yeah! Yeah! Giddy up! Woo! We all get a horse to ride around. Well, not a single horse, but there are gonna be wagon rides. Right! It's Mr. Matt's favorite part. That's right. <laughs> and if you guys want, we're gonna have a super special kids only gift shop. <gasps> kids only gift shop? What's yes. that? Well, this gift shop's gonna have lots of presents that kids can buy presents for their grown ups. Because <gasps> it's hard for our friends to buy presents when mom or dad or grandma or grandpa has to be the one to take them to the store. That's not a surprise. So, yeah. with our gift shop, you guys can go in and pick out a gift for your grown up, and then we help you wrap it up right there so you get to take it home and it's a surprise for them on Christmas. That's amazing. Can I buy presents for my, my brothers? Well, we're not actually selling kid presents, no. If your brother's a grown up, yes. But we're selling presents just for our special grown ups. So it's a great chance to buy them a surprise present for Christmas. Mm -hmm. It is such a great idea. And we really hope that you can join us for Christmas Fest, friends. All of our children's team is gonna be there. And we are also still collecting offering for Hope Mission. So if you guys brought in your offering today, you can give it in right, right now. now. And our offering will be helping buy lunches for kids who do not have any. And next week is our Loaves and Fishes store. It is Gianna's favorite part of the month. Now, I really hope that you guys are all earning your Loaves and Fishes dollars. And you can earn them in different ways. Remember, you can bring a friend to church with you. You can memorize your Bible verse. Or you can read your Bible three times a week. Make sure you have them with you next week. And maybe you and your friends can work together to buy something to help someone else here in Calgary, Canada, and around the world. And that's all we have for awesome announcements today, guys. So we will see you next time. See you then. Bye. Hi, everyone. My name is Miss Anna. Welcome. And my name is Miss Gianna. And we're so glad you guys have joined us today. Today's story is unlike any other in the Bible. Are you ready for this? Oh, am I ever. Whoa, <laughs> what is all of this? Well, I thought it would be fun to sing about our theme for today. We're talking about Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones. What song could you possibly sing that's about bones? <clears throat> dem bones, dem bones, dem. Dry bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem. Dry bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem. Dry bones. <gasps> So that is one song about bones in the story, but I don't think that's a very good intro. Oh, no, 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 no. I got more. <clears throat> okay. <gasps> the leg bone's connected to the knee bone, and the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone, and the thigh bone's connected to a I don't remember bone, and that bone's connected to a another bone, and, and you don't like my singing? Okay, that's okay. Um, woo, I also have a rap. <clears throat> the femur bone, it limes with lima. The tibia, and it rhymes with ribia. The other bone is all alone. You got some bones and it's going down. And I think you're just making things up now. Ribia, is that even a word? I mean, it could be. I thought a song would spice it all up. <laughs> We're talking about dried up bones. It's kind of gross. Yeah, that is right. This is a little different, but it's also a pretty amazing story. Let's go check it out right now. Okay. Hi everyone, my name's Miss Alethea. Remember the place where God's people, the Israelites, have been taken captive? You have to remember all the way back to the story of Daniel. Hmm. Babylon, that's right. God's people had spent years being rebellious against God. They had worshiped other gods and turned away from the one true God. So God allowed his people to take, be taken captive by the Babylonians. 
This was a big deal for them. They lost their land, their temple, and their nation. How do you think they felt about that? Can you give me a thumbs up if you think they felt good? Or a thumbs down if they felt awful? That's right. They felt pretty awful. They were hopeless and discouraged. During this time, God gave a special vision of hope. A vision is sort of like a dream, but you're awake. And he gave this vision to the prophet Ezekiel. Oh, hi, Ezekiel. Now, this wasn't, a very, uh, this wasn't an ordinary vision, was it, Ezekiel? No, it was very unusual. In this vision, God took Ezekiel to a huge valley and all around were dried up bones scattered everywhere. And God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live again? Now that's a strange question, isn't it, Ezekiel? Yeah, but you were pretty smart and you knew that normally bones like this can't become alive again. But you also knew that God can do anything and knows everything. So you replied, only you know the answer to that, God. So then God told Ezekiel to speak a message of prophecy to the dry bones. And that meant that Ezekiel was going to say what was going to happen to the bones. So God told Ezekiel to say, listen to the word of the Lord. I will breathe into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and skin on you and you will return to life. When I breathe new life into you, you will know that I am the Lord. When Ezekiel spoke the words, the bones rattled together and turned into complete skeletons. Kind of like this. There's some bones down there. Yes, it's happening. So now there are all these bodies standing there, but there was no breath in the bodies, no life. So then God said, speak a prophecy to the winds and breathe into these dead bodies that they may breathe again. So Ezekiel did, and they came to life. And a vast army of men were there standing together. Isn't that amazing? Next, God told, told you what this all meant, didn't he, Ezekiel? The bones represented Israel. The people of Israel felt dried up and out of breath and out of life from being in captivity. It's not hard. It's hard not being free. Remember, the Israelites were very hopeless and very discouraged, but God made another promise to them. He said, Oh, you people, I will open your graves and cause you to rise. I will bring you out of captivity and back to the land of Israel. When you return, you will know that I am the Lord. In other words, God told Israel that he was going to rescue them from Babylon and he was going to give them back their land. They weren't going to be stuck in Babylon forever. Let's pretend we're the Israelites and give a big cheer. Woo! God was coming back for them. And when they saw this, they would know that God is the one true God. God told Ezekiel that when he was, had done all this and rescued his people, Ezekiel was to tell the people of Israel that it is the Lord that caused these things to happen. And he kept his word. The story is found in the Bible and God in the Bible can always be trusted. When I am discouraged, God makes things possible. Just like he showed Ezekiel that things are possible even though the Israelites were discouraged. So God takes Ezekiel to a valley that's full of a bunch of dried up bones, like leftovers of humans. And he tells him that these bones are like the Israelites and how they're so discouraged that they feel just as useless as dried up bones, which is kind of weird. Yes, but there's more. God was telling Ezekiel in a really unique way that the Israelites didn't need to feel hopeless because they had God on their side and God can breathe life into his people. In other words, God was using this vision to encourage the Israelites. He was going to help them and bring them back to their land. God talks to people in very different ways, doesn't he? You're right. He doesn't always use ways that we would choose to communicate his message, but he does continually show us how powerful he is. And he continually shows us that when I am discouraged, God makes things possible. 
That's so encouraging. God does amazing miracles, like taking his people out of captivity and bringing them back to their land. He is so powerful. And that's what our memory verse has been talking about this whole month. So let's say it together. Everybody stand up. All right. You are the God who does miracles. You show your power among the nations. Psalm 77, 14. Should we say it again? One more time. Let's do it one more time. You are the God who does miracles. You show your power among the nations. Psalm 77, 14. Okay, hey, you guys can sit down. Good job, everybody. And you know what else I like about this story? It shows us that God cares for us so much because he loves us. He doesn't want us to feel hopeless and discouraged. He is telling the Israelites that he's going to encourage them and help them. They don't have to feel so down. And our bottom line says, when I'm discouraged, God makes things possible. Let's say that together. I'll say the first part, and then you guys shout out the second part. When I'm discouraged, God makes things possible. It has been so fun learning together, guys. So we will see you next time. There's no greater power than the power of our God. There's no greater power than the power of our God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I See what God